here with Arcia, uh, who writes uh, Shahnameh. It's a book for kids about um, Persian uh, mythology. And it's a series of uh, two books out now with another one coming, right? Correct, yeah. Uh, what made you decide to do a series of Persian myths as children books? Well, um, I'm a first-generation Iranian-American. Okay. Uh, I was born in Tehran, Iran, but uh, I grew up here. Okay. And growing up here, you know, there was never anything that I thought properly reflected and captured Persian culture the right way. Um, it was always grossly misrepresented or even racist at times. So I thought, you know, having my experience as a graphic artist and a comic creator, why not use what I've learned after all these years to create a children's book series for not only uh, kids like me, for something to relate to, but also non-Iranians to learn about Persian mythology and culture the proper way, I think, the way the way it really is. And so that's, that was part of the motivation of why I wanted to create these books. Uh, so you mentioned that the source material is an epic poem um, and that you was kind of split up into, into a series of books. Um, how did you decide on that poem, or is that kind of like, that's, it was a no-brainer, that is the Persian poem? It, 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 is, the, it is the epic poem. Um, Ask any Iranian, they know what the Shahnameh is. It's, a, it's an integral part of Iranian identity and Iranian culture. Um, every Iranian kind of adheres in their heart to what the, what the Shahnameh is, because it literally preserved Iranian culture and history and mythology um, by this, this epic poem that was written over a thousand years ago by a gentleman named Ferdowsi. Um, it was a no-brainer, because uh, all the really cool stories are in the Shahnameh. So you, you mentioned the word history. So. Is it is it similar to um, the Odyssey, uh, and in that there's some element of history to uh, to the myth, the myth itself? Yeah, yeah. It starts off with a really mythic kind of vibe to it, and like yeah. kind of the, the prehistoric era. Right. It actually starts off with like the the first tribal aspect of Iran and the first king, and it keeps on going. And the further it goes along, it actually becomes a lot more historically accurate okay. through all the way to the Sasani Diocese. And you can actually counter other historical sources that say, yeah, that's right. So the closer it gets towards the end of the Shahnam, it's, it's a lot more historical. But at the same time, it's not as fun as the early stuff because <laughs> you've got, you got dragons and monsters and oh, stuff wow. in yeah. the early part of the Shahnam, yeah. which is a more mythic kind of aspect to it. Uh, so, so you mentioned dragons. What, uh, what creatures have you found to be kind of universal? They're, they're found in, I guess, we're mostly familiar with European mythology, yeah. but it's also found in Persian mythology. Well, the more universal ones, there's obviously the dragons, uh, there's witches, uh, evil wizards. But the one thing that I will say to kind of go the other side of that, there's another beast called Deves. And those seem to be exclusive to, to Persian mythology. Um, You'll see a lot of translations of the Shahnameh. When they refer to the Deves, they call them demons, but they're not really demons. They're kind of, I can't, they're Deves for lack of a better <laughs> word. And when I did my book, I wanted to make it a point that I used the term Deve, and I, I kind of reflected what they looked like based on ancient Persian uh, miniature paintings. Um, so that seems to be exclusive to, to, the, to the Shahnameh. And interestingly enough, um, they play a critical role in the narrative of, of, of humans, because they taught humans how to read and write language. Okay. Um, and they also pro provided to be an, an antagonistic other for the humans in the story, oh, too, where the heroes kind of have to go vanquish these these evil deeds. And one of the stories in uh, the story of, of Rostam, he goes on a quest to rescue the Shah, rescue the king, and there's this evil white deed and this deep army that's kind of, um, he has to overcome and defeat. Okay. So let's talk about the books themselves. So chronologically, uh, it would be the, this one, right, yeah. with, the, with the bird in the front. This uh, is, I'm sorry. Yeah, this oh. is the, this is the first book of my series. It's, okay. not, it's not necessarily the beginning of um, oh. the Shahnameh. Sure, sure. Um, but I decided to start my series with this with this one because I feel like it's a great starting point. It's my favorite story in the Shahnameh, um, and it's a really classic tale. It has a lot of great lessons and that people, and moral people, can learn. Um, so I thought it would be a good idea to start with the story of Zal and Seymour. Uh, so you mentioned, uh, so uh, part of the, the legend here is he's born with white hair. Yeah. Uh, but basically, he's an albino in a yeah. time when we didn't really know what that meant. So it was either an ill or, I guess it was an ill omen, right? Because yeah. you say his father rejects him. Yeah. Uh, and, and you say the lesson is, you know, for kids is not judging people, you know, by their looks. Yeah. Um, is, is that lesson itself found in the original telling, or is that kind of a, a modern interpretation of That's that? That's definitely in the original telling. And actually, um, the Shahnameh is 
full of lessons and, and morals and, and things you can apply to you. I, I, when I've been studying it for the last, I guess, 10 years now, sure. um, even to this day, I'm pulling little aspects to it. And I think Ferdosi, the guy who wrote the show, he's not just a poet. He's also a psychologist. He's a historian. He's a, um, a philosopher. Uh, all these aspects, and there are many aspects. There's also, there's like, there's almost a Carl Jung aspect to uh -huh. some of the tales where he kind of peels off layers of consciousness and kind of delves really in there into the human psyche and what you can learn and pull from it yourself. So I feel like those lessons were always there and were always to be used as metaphors in a way oh, as okay. well. Very cool. And then so Rostrum, you were saying, uh, at least uh, uh, to compare it to something that we know, you were saying it was kind of like a Herculean type tale. Yeah, he's the alpha hero, the, the brave, strong guy who sac uh, puts, his, puts his self aside and goes and faces these impossible tasks and overcomes them with, uh, without fear and totally brave. Yeah, he's like the ultimate hero for Persian mythology. And I think every culture has that ultimate hero right. within their, their mythos. And uh, what, what uh, lesson do you think c comes out of his story? Um, there's, there's a few lessons. There's duty is one, because whenever Iran's in trouble, he's the first one. He's on the front line at all times to defend Iran and pr uh, preserve people's freedom and happiness. So there's duty that's there also. But also um, being noble, doing the right thing, good thoughts, good deeds, good right. words, um, always being on the path of truth. Uh, that kind of thing, you know. So he, he's the he's the noble hero, really, you know. Okay, and um, but that's not to say that he's without flaw, because sure. he makes a lot of mistakes in the show. Yeah, you don't see him really make the mistakes like in the original text in my book. I try to kind of simplify it and gear it towards kids and kind of just do the, the, the core of the story. But in the original text of the Shahnama, he does make a few mistakes. And I feel like part of the lessons you learn are from the mistakes some of the characters, like yeah. the kings and even Rostam, it's say. Yeah. Make. Yeah, well, I mean, I think even within within here, when I was looking through the book, you know, uh, when it's talking about where this element, this elephant uh, uh, goes on a rampage and he uses his strength to stop the elephant, I like the way that, that you say his father was happy that he was brave to tackle the elephant, but his father was also sad that he hurt the elephant. Yeah. So, you know, I, I would say, you know, definitely not that there's we can't have the fun of regular superhero stories, but I feel like they tend to just solve everything with their fists. Yeah. And so what I like is you've taken this character that is this alpha male character, but you've also said, but think about also what's going on, you know, especially in this case, his, his nemesis being an elephant. An elephant is just an animal. It doesn't really know what it did. So it doesn't deserve, you know, the, the, the punishment that he takes. So I, I kind of like how you work that in there as well. So thank you, thank you I, very much. I, I, think, I think it works you know, within, even if maybe some of the flaws are, or would be very complicated for children or maybe not child appropriate, I don't know, but, but I like how you still work some of that Thank in, you. in there. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Uh, so what's the third book gonna be about? The third book is called The Bravery of Gorda Farid. Um, there's actually um, uh, a young man named Sohrab who's actually Rostam's son. Okay. And Sohrab wants to go um, find his father and he wants to overthrow the Shah of Iran and install Rostam and himself as the new Shah, of, the, the ruler of Iran. Right. Um, so he gets an army together and he inv invades Rostam, uh, invades Iran. And along the border of Iran and Turan, the, uh, the, the two kingdoms, there's a fortress. And uh, that's the first step along the way of invading Iran. And um, it's a tale about this young lady, uh, this young woman named Gorda Farid and she single-handedly takes this army on by herself with Sohrab at the helm of it. And she, she fights Sohrab in a one-on-one -on -one combat. And it's a tale of, of bravery and stepping up and like, you know, that even in the face of uh, adverse, adverse, ad, adverse, uh, your adversaries in um, impossible numbers, you can yeah. still kind of come through this thing. So it's a really empowering tale of, of stepping up and, and being fearless. And does... Uh I guess it, it would, on the one hand, it would be a spoiler for the book, but maybe not spoilers for something thousands of years old. Does she, does she defeat him by a feat of strength or, or using her mind? Or she or? actually uses her wits. Okay. And uh, she stalls him enough where they can get, try to get Rostam to come and help. Oh, okay, excellent. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. So, uh, is there anything else that that you'd like people to know about either the series or your work or anything like that? Um, I, if you would please definitely check out the book. Go to shawnamanforkids.com. Um, I'm on all social media, Instagram, Twitter, 
Facebook. Um, I try to post as regularly some cool content as much as I can. And definitely check out the books. I think these books are universal. I don't think you have to necessarily be, you know, I think these stories are such that uh, anybody can enjoy them. And they have kind of universal themes that everybody can learn from and appreciate for sure. And you learn about uh, a different culture, you know? Right. Yeah, and, and, and I think that makes perfect sense. I mean, there's nothing, you know, necessarily universal about Hercules. It yeah. just happens to be what we're familiar with, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, things like the success of Mulan have shown that you know, you can kind of find stories that are, you know, human truths anywhere because we're all human and, and we all have very similar uh, experiences that we go through. You know, yeah. we all live and die and, and marry and have children and so on. So, yeah. um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. All right. Thanks.